Every few years, the Ebola virus emerges from the jungle and crosses from animals to humans, a potentially deadly threat first identified back in 1976. An expedition to the forests of Congo was investigating a mysterious illness. The virus was discovered by a scientist, Peter Pio, and he's now appalled that it's still causing outbreaks. Well, it's very sad that this uh, is happening again, uh, that we haven't learned the lessons from the past, where through very simple measures we can control this epidemic. But I understand it because people in West Africa have never been exposed to it. Some even don't believe that Ebola exists. Once inside the human body, the virus causes internal bleeding. And because it's carried by bodily fluids, it can be passed among families or to people handling the victims. With a high rate of fatalities, Ebola is very dangerous, but there are limits to its spread. The virus is far less contagious than flu, for example, or SARS. You need to be very close to victims to become infected. There's also some natural immunity. About 10% of people in Africa and more here in Britain have a genetic trait that helps fight the virus. And outbreaks can be contained. Dozens have been shut down in recent years. It all depends on enforcing tough controls on hygiene. Ebola, like all viruses, can be absolutely contained by quarantine. That's the one universally effective antiviral. So essentially, if you have the virus, they can lock you away in a room. It won't necessarily make you better, and there are no treatments for Ebola, but it protects the rest of the world by preventing the spread of the infection. A lab on the front line in West Africa. But what if the virus goes further? If someone infected flies to Britain? This was explored today by the government's emergency committee, COBRA. But airlines and health authorities are watching closely, so the risks are said to be very low. The challenge is in Africa. Tonight, Liberia closed all of its schools. Desperate measures till Ebola is stopped. David Shukman, BBC News.